What's up? This is Nick, head coach of the Cerulean City Psyducks, coming at you with a drug-addled fever dream of a battle. And also, Jake was high on painkillers because he got in a motorcycle accident last week and he's uh, recovering. But the battle did happen and it was something unique. So he leads with his Nas, which is not uncommon, so I made a decent call with my DJ High Tech lead. That shiny Incineroar. Because I'm like, I'm Choice Scarf this week, so I'm like, okay. I can just hit U-turn all day long and not be worried in the slightest. And he also brings in Tyran so far, which was sweet, because I'm like, hell yeah, dude, that's some super effective damage on you. Boom. So I hit him with that U-turn and go back, because the uh, Incineroar with uh, Intimidate and U-turn is pretty powerful. It's definitely very helpful in a lot of situations. I know I saw it in the VGC tournaments a whole lot this past weekend. But uh, yeah, and then we got Dino Plant coming in, which scares out that Tyran so far and lets me get my uh, uh, Mega Evolution out for free. And right here, I th think I went for the Leech Seed, because I was like, okay, anybody who comes in, I just want them seeded to help with some recovery, because that's never a bad thing. It's always good. Yep, there we go. We got those Leech Seeds up. And now I definitely do not want to stay into this face-off because a Photon Geyser from Necrozma just absolutely would obliterate Mega Venusaur. So, after a little bit of sap and health from those Leech Seeds, I'm going to get the hell out of here because this is a very bad matchup for Dino Plant. Then I bring in DJ High Tech again, expecting the Photon Geyser because, I mean, that's just a solid attack. To go for, or he commonly runs Heat Wave on Necrozma as well, so either one of those I would totally find with. But it was the, uh, whatever you call that, the Photon Geyser, so total immunity to it, pretty sweet. And then again, this face off, it's just another very easy U turn for me because if he brings anybody in, they'll take a little bit of damage from U turn. If Necrozma stays in, he'll take a nice chunk of damage from U turn. So he brings Tyran so far back in again. Which I could have predicted and gone for um, Will-O-Wisp, which I did run on him, but I was like, eh, we'll just go for the damage. I can just keep cycling this, and it's nothing but good stuff for me. And I bring Dino Plant back in because it's nice and scary against the Tyranitar. Tyran so far, yeah, Tyranitar. And right here, he goes for the Stone Age, and I went for Knockoff, because I wasn't sure what he was holding. And it shows that it was a Choice Scarf. Which is interesting, which that actually probably would have been good for me if I had just stuck with it. But he's still faster than me, even without the Scarf, and luckily I went for the Synthesis here. Which gave me a nice, big old, big boy chunk of health. Right back, which Dino Plant definitely appreciates having as much HP as possible. And an Ice Punch here. This is the, the beginning of the Tom fuckery that starts to happen. Freeze. I was like, wow. An instant thought, and I was like, wow! And that Giga Drain to finish off Tyrant so far. So, there's a bit of Tom fuckery already. We've got a freeze, a 10% freeze off an Ice Punch into a zero turn thaw, which was pretty cool. And then uh, Necrozma comes back in, understandably, and I don't want to be in here again. So, this time, instead of bringing in DJ High Tech, I bring in X and give it to him. Because I'm like, okay, another Photon Geyser. I didn't think of knockoff, but yeah, that makes sense too. But luckily, I'm holding a Z Crystal, so there is absolutely zero worry of taking that extra damage. And this time, I'm like, Psh, well, just knock me off again. Oh, another bit of Tom fuckery. A 10% chance of that Heat Wave missing, which was crucial because I I went with a physically defensive um, Metagross this week, and uh, yeah, I didn't remember. Oh right, I don't want to go up against a Crozmo with him. So I set up my Stealth Rocks and get the hell out of there. And again, bring in DJ High Tech. The just perfect counter for this Necrozma because it really can't do much of anything against me. And it goes for the Heat Wave. Which does pretty much nothing to Incineroar. And now this time I was a bit on the fence for what I should go for. Just because I wasn't sure. I knew he couldn't bring Tyranitar back in. So I was expecting something like a Celesteela. But instead he brings in... The Salamence, which is a bit unfortunate that I went for the Fire Blast, but it still does decent damage against it. Doesn't get the burn, which would have been nice, but still, 
solid damage, and I'm okay with that. So at this point I'm like, okay, I'm Choice Scarfed into Fire Blast. This is not going to end well for me, so we're just going to straight up switch. I expected something like an Earthquake, so I bring in my Levitating Rotom Wash, just to kind of avoid that, and boom, perfect call on my part. And now I have Rotom Wash in against him, who really doesn't mind being faced off against a Salamence. But Salamence does go for the Outrage, which was a little scary when he picked that. I was like, oh man, I don't know how much damage he's going to do. And it did a lot, but I do get the Will-O-Wisp off, which was very nice, because it cancels out his leftovers and halves his attack, which makes it so that I can survive a few more hits. And I get my little bit of leftovers heals, because I was running a no HP investment, um, <laughs> what you might call it, a uh, Rotom this week, because I gave him Pain Split and barely held on with 8 HP. And I did go for the Pain Split here, so splitting our health and my very low 125 max gives me another almost 60 health back from doing that Pain Split, so. He's looking pretty weak. I'm just over half health, which means I can definitely survive an Outrage if he goes for one. And uh, then this turn, I go for a Volt Switch while well, he is confused, and even with that lowered Hurt Yourself Confusion chance with these newer gens, he still hurts himself, and I can do the Volt Switch to pick up an easy KO. And then I... my landfill comes back, and I bring DJ High Tech back in because these two are a, such a good rotating core of Volt Switch and U-Turn, and in comes Teeth Guy. The Toxic Croak. Now this one I was a bit concerned about because Incineroar is not super afraid of him, but he's afraid enough. So I do just go for that Will-O-Wisp, which does lock me into it. But the burn is pretty crucial. It's very nice, even though he still does fat damage. So that was still pretty scary seeing that come out, and I'm like, uh, who can I bring in to a um, Drain Punch? who really won't be too worried, but can also kill this thing. And now I was like, okay, this is time I can bring in Stretch, my Hitmon Lee. Just picked him up last week, and now he is going to do some work on my team. So yeah, does very good, especially this was a an interesting Hitmon Lee, because I knew I didn't really need that much speed to be faster than his team. So I was running in on Burden, and then he comes with another Drain Punch, which does a lot of damage. I could have had a Pinch Berry, but I just had the Citrus Berry because I was like, I just want something that'll trigger fast and give me my speed boost. So I eat my Citrus Berry and it brings me up just into the high yellow and I get my bulk up off, which this was nice because this gave me plus one defense and plus one attack, which was enough to pretty much start cleaning up his team. So I can go for the Blaze Kick, which does extra damage, I'm assuming because of his dry skin. I'm not sure if that's what he was running, but I just went for it just for the chance that it was there. And this is one where I'm like, uh, I don't know if I can survive a Mach Punch. I don't think I can. So let's just switch in and bring in someone who can take a Mach Punch and pretty much anything else from this Breloom. Which, I called that Mach Punch, and Yolandi can definitely take it since it resists it and is a full defense investment. Which even with its base 60, I mean, full defense investment is still pretty solid on it. And so this turn, I don't remember if I went... Okay, he withdraws, and I went for the Protect, expecting a Spore or something. But uh, he brings in a Celesteela, and my Protect is kind of just going to go into the Aether, and nothing happens. So this is a very bad matchup for Sylveon, because one Heavy Slam will just absolutely obliterate it. So I decide, okay, I kind of got to sack somebody off here. So I bring in Stretch one more time, because he was kind of my Celesteela counter. And it does go for the Leech Seed, so I could have gone for a Yawn that turn with Sylveon, but I instead opted for just, I don't know, trying to do anything. And here I made a bit of a miscall. call. I didn't think he was going to be going for the... Um, leech stall the whole time so he does go for protect and I could have gone for a bulk up which would have been very good in this situation but I did go for the blaze kick because I just wanted to get damage out on it because that thing was like when I was looking at this this matchup before the before our fight I was like how do I kill Celesteela 
So I get another Blaze Kick off, which does very good damage. Like I said, if I had gotten that bulk up off, it would have done way more. And I could have maybe survived that Heavy Slam. I don't remember. But Stretch does go down. But he did come in, and he did do some work. So I'm happy with that. And it boosts defense, which this is one where I honestly don't care if his defense goes up because I had a special and a physical attacker to go into him. So DJ High Tech comes in, low health, which was a bit unfortunate, so that's why I believe... So it's attack drops, which is good, which means his heavy slams do less damage. And I believe I went for Will-O-Wisp, because I wanted to negate... No, I did go for the Fire Blast. Okay. I do burn it at some point, I believe. I think we kind of just sit here for a few turns with Celesteela just... Oh, and it avoided, so that was annoying. But with that minus one attack, this Heavy Slam is not enough to kill me. Like, not even close, which was very nice. But, I think we go through one more cycle of protect and attack. So, no, I switch here because I'm like, I know he's just going to protect, so there's no point in me hanging around. And I bring in Landfill. And he does go for the protect, so I did make that predict. But I think he goes for a second protect here. Just kind of to stall and get as much of his HP back as he can, which totally makes sense because this thing is super annoying. Oh, nope, no protect. I go for that Will-O-Wisp, so this was good because I was able to cancel out its uh, leftover heals. And it does go for the Leech Seed, which, yeah, that sucks, but I was not going to be staying out anyways because Landfill, I mean, he could attack it. He had Hydro Pump because he always has Hydro Pump, but I was like, eh, I'd rather bring in somebody who... I know can take some hits some more and can kind of just kill this thing in a couple shots once I get the chance. So I go for the Volt Switch which does a nice chunk of damage because I'm weak to it and I go back and yet again I kind of just keep cycling between these two because this U-turn Volt Switch thing is pretty damn good and he had no hazard set up either. So this was something where I could totally just sit here and switch these two out all day long. And now he's doing even less damage with his heavy slams. So that was pretty awesome. That he, yeah, he's, that was 10 damage with a heavy slam. So at this point he's at a minus 2 attack. And he just goes for protect, understandable. And I think at this point I was... I had gone through about half of my fire blasts. So that was a bit unfortunate because I'm like, shit, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta kill this thing. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of attacks that can actually kill it. Because no one else on my team could really take this thing out easily. So I go for the Fire Blast, and it's not quite enough, which is really annoying, because then he gets this Leech Seed off. So at this point, I know I'm like, he's going to Seed me, he's going to get health back from that, and then he's going to Protect and get more health back from that, and it's kind of just slowly killing me while slowly keeping him alive. And then, yeah, he's still in the red. He's still very much in KO range. But at this point, I'm like, I gotta switch out because I know I can't survive another Leech Seed health draw. So I'm just gonna do this. And I called the Protect again. So he's not getting any more health. He's staying in that low red. And I heal up a little bit with my leftovers. It was just... <laughs> I didn't feel like losing a Pokemon if I didn't have to. So Landfill comes back in. And I think Soul Stealer protects one more turn. Yep just to avoid its inevitable death, which uh, is about to come, because yeah, I just go for the, the Volt Switch, because I'm like, it is in low enough range, it will die. Yeah, I mean, it could have been at like just under half health and it would have died. But it is, yeah, definitely in the dead range, so I'm gonna go for that Volt Switch one more time, and it is going to connect and pick up that KO. So Soul Stealer is finally gone. That thing was my biggest worry about his team because it just it could just cause so many problems. It's so bulky and the heavy slams from it are just terrifying. But luckily in his drug addled mind kind of just stayed with it. So here is another very long drawn out part. I don't think I switch out again the rest of this battle. And we get a spore, which is understandable. I think I just went for the attack on that turn. So yeah, I'm just fast asleep, which 
I knew the spore was gonna happen. I was considering it at this point. I'm like, hmm, well maybe I can bring in someone and then he can't spore me anymore and I am protected from falling asleep. But I get that one turn, sleep, and protect to block his bullet seat, which was pretty awesome. That's the first one turn sleep that I get. So of course he goes for the spore once again and I was kind of just hoping that maybe spore would miss. I know it's like a very low chance that it's gonna miss, but it's a chance. But it doesn't miss, I'm asleep again. And we're both in full health, so this is kind of just staring each other down. And I went for the attack this turn. Because I was like, screw it. Whatever. And these bullet seeds were scary, but it does only hit two times, so I got really lucky. And my hyper voice comes out, and this is way more than needed to one hit KO the Breloom. So that was very fortunate on my part that I got two one turn sleeps, which definitely gave me a huge advantage. And now it comes in Necrozma, which this thing was not fun to stare down because, um, yeah, I went for the Protect because I was like, I want a little more health since I don't know how well I can take a Photon Geyser. But he does go for the Stealth Arcs, which was a bit annoying, and at that point it pretty much said there is no bringing in the Incineroar anymore because he would fall to the Stealth Arcs, which was a bit unfortunate. Because, I mean, that was another thing, is at this point I'm like, I really can't switch anybody out because everybody will take damage and nobody wants damage to come up against Photon Geyser, which does a shitload of damage. But with my natural special defense and a full HP investment, I was able to tank that really well. And I got my Yawn off, which means I can just protect for my next turn, get some more leftovers heals, he will fall asleep, and then I can just keep, keep myself alive, which is pretty much padding my stats right now, just <laughs> giving Sylveon a bunch of healing and tank hits. So yeah, he's pretty much at full health. I'm just above half health, I believe, or just under half health. And he is now a sleepy time Necrozma. So this, this face-off goes on for the rest of the battle. Um, I did go for the wish here because I was like, I just want to get that health back up because from what I can tell, my Sylveon is the only Pokemon who can take down this Necrozma at this point. Because I know Venusaur can't take a Photon Geyser and will be slower than Necrozma. He does wake up, so he got that one turn sleep as well. And very luckily for me, I did have just enough health to survive that Photon Geyser. And I do get a Hyper Voice, which does show me that is a a three hit kill attack so I know what I have to do to kill him and at this point I'm kinda like okay we just gotta go with it I don't remember if I go for the protect I think I might go for a wish he goes for photon geyser understandably it's his big heavy stab attack and it does a lot of damage no I did go for the hyper voice actually this is kind of what sealed his fate this next turn, I think. Because I think here I go for Protect just to get as much health as I can, even though I don't think I would have survived the Photon Geyser with the health that I'm going to have after this turn. But uh, yeah, he goes for the Photon Geyser, which was unfortunate. And I think at this point he may have assumed I was going to switch out and bring someone else in. To try and take a photon geyser so he goes for oh no I go for the the protect again I think that was a double protect so yeah blocking another photon geyser is like I need as much health as I could get because I know this photon geyser hits like a freaking truck and I can still kill him he is still in killable range but I still don't think 92 health would have been enough to survive a photon geyser so he goes for a stealth rock I'm not entirely sure why I thought it may have been that he was expecting something, I'm not sure, but it did give me that free wish, which was absolutely crucial, because like I said, I don't think I would have survived another Photon Geyser. And he still has it, because he uses it this turn, I believe. Yeah, he goes for a Photon Geyser again, which I don't even know how much power points that move has, but god damn, dude, he was using that constantly. And I do get my wish, which puts me all the way back up to full health, which means I can take at least one more Photon Geyser, but he goes for a Heat Wave, 
I'm not sure. Maybe he was hoping for a burn. And I go for the yawn, because I'm like, if I can put him to sleep, I can just finish this thing off clean and clear, just attack while he snoozes. And at this point, I know I have enough health to take even a Photon Geyser, unless it crits. So I believe at this point, I just go out for the attacks, because that's all I need to do. Like I said, I think he was trying to get a burn on this to mitigate my um, leftovers heals. But I can hit him with that Hyper Voice, which does a nice fat chunk of damage, and now he is very easily in KO range. So I kind of just sit here, ready to roll. I know I can take a Photon Geyser. He is sleeping. So I think at this point, I just kind of spam attack. And I'm able to... Yep, Hyper Voice. That'll be enough to pick up that KO. So very long drawn out face off between Necrozma and Sylveon, but... I don't know if he ran out of Photon Geysers there at the end, or if he just decided to try and get a burn to get rid of my leftover seals, but it was enough. I was able to take out the Necro that Necrozma, so the two biggest threats on his team that I was afraid of were Celesteela and Necrozma, and slowly but surely, I was able to take them out and break through his kind of stall tactics with Celesteela, and just something could take the power from that Necrozma, so... Actually, he could have gone for a knockoff and got rid of my leftovers. Hmm, well... He didn't. I'm going to chalk it up to drug-addled brain, but um, it was a good fight. Sorry you were drugged up for it after your motorcycle accident, but I'll take the win when I can get it. So uh, next week I play the Viridian City Volcarona, so we'll see how that one goes. We'll uh, see you next week then, guys. Bye.